All right, I am Sean Conklin. I am the assistant curator and museum educator, and we are in the Regina A. Crick Center for the Arts at St. Bonaventure University. So basically, uh, as you can see, we are in an empty gallery. So my first day back to work when the pandemic kicked in uh, was to clean out this gallery, to basically be like, surprise, you're losing all of your spaces, you're losing access to your collection. Um, so after that initial panic, right, that I think anyone would have felt, it was, okay, how do we do what we do? Just how are we going to do it differently? And that started this building capacity feature. I like that everybody pulled different things. I appreciate that because those were things we talked about over the course of a few different weeks. Um, so now I want to switch gears a little bit. So what can I take and do virtually? How can I still work in a hybrid model to make it feel like it's face to face or to have some hands on activities, but really trying to connect the collection and the museum and our, major, our mission, our purpose, you know, which is to educate, enlighten, engage all of these things that I think we do pretty well, but now I have to do it in a totally different sphere and something I've never done before. So again, there was another panic. Um, and then you just kind of get started. It was a immediate, I'm very grateful to some of the teachers in the area. I think we had this, we're all in this together mentality. We're all making it work every day. We're all making it up as we go. So there was always the benefit that if it totally failed and I fell flat on my face, they were fine because they had been there. Um, and so it started with school tours. That was really what I do every day. It was an easy transition to think, okay, how do we take this tour and how do I put it in a virtual space or digital space? Um, and then it started with just basic Zoom. Okay, I'll send you the Zoom link. Um, we'll look at some artwork. We'll do some BTS, things that I can do on the screen. And then how do we have a follow-up project with that? Um, and so from there, it just built and built and built in terms of getting new equipment, getting better lighting, getting better audio, and then also trying to figure out how can I make it so you're actually creating and doing the projects you would have done in some type of variation in your space while I'm in my space, but it feels like we're back at the museum together. Um, and that's going to be the goal for a while is to just kind of figure out how do we expand the sphere of the museum without expanding the space of the museum. Um, the things that I then kind of focus on were, what are things that people just continuously tell me they're missing? Um, because of the pandemic, because we cannot have visitors in our space, because we don't even have a space for you to come into, um, how can I give you those experiences that you love without literally having access to anything that made them special? Um, and that turned into, okay, so we're gonna do our art shows. The students love them. And he said, I wanna give recognition or support people who have had the most difficult time. And I specifically feel like K through 12 students have it rough. They're never quite sure what the rules are. They're never quite sure what they're doing. I can see it in their faces when we Zoom together. So being able to not let them miss out on that experience, specifically we give away scholarships, so that's a huge deal for a lot of them. Just getting art supplies or your artwork reproduced is huge. So figuring out how do we transition that into a digital space was like a three month undertaking, um, but it worked out really well. And I think the teachers, the amount of notes I got from teachers, from parents saying, thank you for giving this, them this opportunity. Um, this is the only thing we've done all year. We've done no tours, we've done no Zooms, we've done no anything, or we've been all alone in our house. They've been drawing like crazy. It's nice to see some recognition or have someone besides me tell them it's good. Um, that made it feel really special and really exciting and something that I can, can see taking elements of this and really continuing it um, into the future. So it's not gonna be just back to artwork on the walls. There will be you know, a digital space, a digital element, a way to like think, pair, share beyond the walls of the museum. I really appreciate everyone like working so hard on their artwork and being very open about sharing some of their stories with me because that can be really difficult to talk about some of those emotions and to make some of those images. And I appreciate that you all really, you know, that was evident that you were putting in that effort. So thank you for that. And so basically, like, as we're cleaning out galleries, the thing was, you're looking at artwork in a different way. And it made me think, 
okay, if we have no artwork, then we have all the artwork, right? Like if we're going into the digital space, what are things that have not been on display or things that maybe people haven't gotten to experience on tours? Um, and honestly, it's a work I really enjoy. So we have this work by Faith Ringgold. It's called The Sunflower Quilting Bee at Arles. Um, and it originally was hung in our president's office. So it was actually not even on display for the general public. So that was my immediate, like, let's get it out. Let's show it to everybody. Let's figure out a way to make this into a project. Um, and so some pieces fell into place where we've always wanted to partner with other institutions. African American Center for Cultural Development um, just recently founded their like brand new building and they are fixing that up. So it was the perfect time to say, I want to focus on this artwork. I want to focus on black culture and specifically black art. Um, I know there are connections to your collection and I would like to start this project as a way to build a partnership. Um, we have access to these digital spaces. I have access to classrooms. Um, and that started kind of the adventure we went on, really, of what became the Faith Ring Gold Story Quilt Project. We're like pre printed to teach them like techniques to sew. So there is some of the people who are that are like this So I wanted to make sure in the process that I was not only teaching the students specifically about Faith Ringgold as an artist, but also about quilt making, the prominence of quilts in black art and black culture, um, connection to story quilts, quilts um, in Olean, New York, as well as our connection to um, the Underground Railroad. So connecting it back to the center and really saying, we can trace this through history and show you actual pieces from our collections. We're doing object-based learning but we're also gonna expand it and I want you to do some art making and I want you to do some critical thinking and we're gonna do some anti-racist education because in our area specifically, that was one of the things a lot of the teachers reached out to say, we don't cover this, we know we should. And just in writing the grant, we saw a huge disconnect in like racial breakdowns in our area, um, specifically with younger people. So like birth to 18 is a very different demographic than what we normally see in our like 30 to 60. So that's principally white. If you look at birth to 16, it is a kind of breakout of every other race in the area. So I immediately said, okay, we need to do the approach of the mirror or the window. I wanna see these students learning about culture that relates to their lives, but I also want them to feel reflected in our institutions. I want to have them make something that we can hang up and have them show their friends and their family and talk about the learning process. Um, and so we settled on making a quilt <laughs> because the teacher really liked the idea. She liked the idea of hand building and sewing. Um, and I had some new technology that I wanted to play around with. So for almost three months, I zoomed in basically every day to their art class and we did some iteration of the project. So the beginning was really looking at the artwork and having them read the story and break down what they're actually looking at and seeing researching the historical black women that are featured and really getting a sense of who Faith Ringgold is as an artist, what is her artistic process, and then how that relates to the Crick Center. Um, then we transitioned into, okay, now you're gonna do it. You are gonna write your story. You are gonna draw your quilt. Like, let's work on this together. And that became a couple week process of really talking about what makes a great story. How are we all storytellers? What are the things that you can think of that can really show your creativity, your sense of style, what you're feeling right now. Um, and I think weirdly COVID was the perfect time for that because there was this like raw sense of emotion in the students that they were ready to talk about how they were feeling. And I think for a lot of students with someone new specifically, that probably wouldn't have happened. So meeting with them one-on-one -on -one and really listening to their stories and giving them just the space to express themselves and then to always be sure to say, you know, like, Thank you so much for sharing that with me. Like that means a lot to me that you would be very open about that. You could tell it was a different experience than they're getting in their classrooms every day. And then from the story, I said, okay, now we're gonna actually design a quilt square. I'm gonna give you an eight and a half by eight and a half sheet. Um, they love the fact that I said, pick any media you want. You know, you like watercolor, awesome, go for broke. You wanna do chalk pastel, cool. 
I had a bunch of kids that were like, I'm not allowed to play with the acrylics. I was like, uh, you, Mr. Conklin is saying you are allowed to play with the acrylics, so let's do it. Um, so just that element, I think giving them that sense of excitement and fun again in school was huge. Um, and so then I got all the works, I scanned them, and I printed them on fabric. So it was this really great Epson printer that you can do different substrates on. Um, so I was playing around with it, and I realized I could print anything essentially on fabric as long as you get the graphics correct and do a lot of color management. Um, so that was a fun like learning piece for me on how to set up those systems. But the results were so beautiful and all the kids were so excited to see their artwork transform into a totally different media that they were not used to. All right, my friends, I want you to pick a quilt that you did not draw. So someone else is in class, because maybe you know who did it, maybe you don't. Um, I want you to think about three things for me, please. So think about when you look at that quilt to focus on just that quilt square. Again, not yours, somebody else. And then the really tricky part began of, okay, now we have the squares and now we have the artwork and now Mr. Conklin, you are in charge of everything else. So I had to then build a quilt. <laughs> Um, so this is another like always be learning situation. I taught myself how to sew. Um, I built an entire five foot by five foot quilt of all of their artwork with filler pieces to relate to Faith Ringgold's designs of using um, things like outdoor fabric furniture, couch um, fabrics, things that are like non-traditional quilting materials as well. And I mean, we have a giant quilt as the result. All of the students' work is together. They got to actually physically hand sew it. So we had the sunflower quilting bee at Allegheny Limestone Central School where all the sixth graders got around the quilt and literally hand quilted different parts of it. And then they got to play with some fabric paint and try their hand at painting or drawing on it. Um, and so the goal is we will get it put together and it will go on display for the opening of the African American Center for Cultural Development and hopefully as we make more quilts with more schools, we will do a very large exhibition where we can hang them in the museum, we can hang them in the center, and really show like this is the beginning of our collaboration, but also this is the work of our students. This is the work of our community. These are the works of our counties, our school systems. Um, they're here to do the work and they're excited about the process. Uh, so, 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 so,